Good morning, everybody. So, should be seeing people pop on pretty soon. I'm running like 10 minutes late this morning. And in all honesty, I just didn't want to get out of bed. It was, it was cold. It's so cold. Staying there, and my four year old was snuggled up next to me. And he was so nice and toasty warm that I decided that I just wanted to like hang out and in bed for a little extra extra time and get some snuggles. So what I'm doing is getting some snuggles. Good morning, Michael. Hey Patrick. Addison. Hi. So yesterday was a really busy day. I don't know anybody. I know that I told Addison this. I was like, damn. I got a whole bunch of people that came on and joined on my group and I had a humongous day of new clients and workshop signups and you know all this just like it was just like boom, boom, boom. the momentum was was right there and I really didn't do anything I didn't do anything yesterday at all I mean I did a couple of appointments but it's not like I went and worked really really hard hey you want to me And, you know, and, and I was, I was looking at stories to tell and different things. And yesterday, a uh, couple of you already know about this, but I think that it's really, I think it's hilarious actually that I, I had really ever um, do anything on Facebook and I had, I had um, joined part of a thread. I'm not calling people out here. so. <laughs> Some of you know who I'm talking about, so it doesn't much matter who it is. It's the, it's the energy of thread. Man, joined this thread and I was sharing, and you know, it was all on financial abundance and, and um, actually stating the truth and all this different stuff. And I had made the comment on there that I was, I was uncomfortable stating everything for a couple reasons. Number one, that all the shame that we are put underneath for our financial abundance or lack thereof perceived financial abundance. Now, we are shown either direction. And then we also believe because connection is one of the very most important things in, in life, we use different things to connect. So we will actually um, bring ourselves down in vibration to to connect with somebody and so sorry my if you hear the computer going beep beep and my phone going beep beep that's because there's like 50,000 people trying to message me right this very second <laughs> but um we try to connect in in our pain we try to connect in our in in our lack we connect through victimhood we connect through so many different negative things and you know it's it really is self-sabotaging moves that we do but we all we all do it self-included that you know like there are days where i feel i i consciously will pull my i'll, I'll be vibrating way up here and i consciously pull myself down so that I feel like I can connect easier to the people that I'm that I'm talking to. So hey, got more people popping in there. Good morning, everybody. Um. So yeah, so we connect through our pain, through our suffering, through through really bringing our vibration down lower. And it is it is a self sabotaging thing that we do because we we feel like if we actually live in in the amount of bliss that we might be experiencing, you know, that we if we actually share, then we're going to be perceived differently. We're going to be judged based on whatever that is. And, you know, I had a friend on this thread that I was, I was um, chatting with, morning, um, 
chatting on yesterday was she had said that she made, you know, she, she makes a really, really good, um, good morning, Allison. Um, she makes really good money and she was scared to share how much her financial situation was because she didn't want other people to step away from her because she means so much more than anybody else on the thread. And it's hilarious because she's just such an easy going, just like, mm, she's just a woman. But her point really made me start thinking because both of us and anybody else on there that is not, that was not in the financial situation that a lot of the, the people on the thread are in, were taking a lot of slack for abundance living, for having more freedom-based mindset. And I say freedom-based because it's not about money. Money is money is a feeling. We attach to our feeling, and that's how we generate money. So, you know, it, it, everything is a feeling. It all comes down to how we're feeling because our feelings are the dictators of our thoughts. But what I was gathering on on this thread was that the common thinking and feeling was. Money is hard to get. Um, only those who work really hard actually deserve money. That, that somebody actually even posted it on there that they believed that if you work hard, that you attribute to other people and to a painful situation. Right? It, it just was that's just what I said. If you're making money, you're not going to take it easy. Other people and putting yourself to a painful situation. So it is, it is so interesting to see these, these smaller viewpoints of money and abundance. Money is just what we, we typically use as abundance, but it's, it's an illusion. It is such a fucking illusion because I have so many days like I had yesterday and, and, you know, and I know that when I'm really vibrating at this higher level, that God just like pours the blessing thing. It just comes in, you know, the, the whole comment of the check is in the mail or I got these checks. That, that stuff really happens. Checks really do appear out of thin air. You, you get stuff for all, you know, for reasons that you didn't even realize that, that were out there, possibilities. You know, I, when I first started these conscious coffees, I was talking about opening up different doorways, creating the doorways. And that's, that's what I'm talking about. It's like, if you create a whole bunch of doorways, then, then all of a sudden you have all these possibilities. Now, I'm not saying be a jack of all traits in, in, in your creation work, because that doesn't work. You cannot be a jack of all traits in your creation work. You have to pick a doorway to walk through and do your major manifestation work of abundance right there. But if you have other doorways, such as, you know, and I lean into investments and other things. So if you have small little channels of investments, then you can manifest, you know, an extra 200 bucks and put it into an investment. And all of a sudden, that investment is going to be crazy for you, especially in the world that we live in right now. Like, we have so many awesome things. And, and what I was actually sharing on that one particular thing, I was like, you know, over the last 90 days, I took $600 and it grew $5,000. Anything for it. Nobody's getting hurt for that. Nobody's, nothing's happening. It is just the way the growth of that particular market is. But I made $4,400 out of thin air, you could say. Oh my gosh. Oh my people. Um, <laughs> never had that one happen so far, but that is the only reason that I made an additional four grand over the last 90 days without having to touch it, without having to work it, without having to do anything was because I manifested the additional, the additional $600 to invest on the front side. So I had made that investment. Good morning, Ryan. Um, and Everson and C. 
Um, so it really is important to, you know, that's, that's like one of my financial doorways. That's one of my doorways of abundance. I have this goal that my investments pay me $200 a day. And my hope is that by the end of 2018, I'm making $200 a day consistently in growth from my investments in the market. And, you know, it's like that, it would not be great. I mean, that's, that's a nice amount of, that's a nice chunk of change to be consistently growing and not having to put in your physical labor to do that. Because as long as you have to put in physical labor to something, such as a financial abundance, you're not really free. You're not really free. You're actually putting a lot of time and energy and, and you know, you're trading your time for money, time for abundance. And you can have a fantastic life doing that. And many people spend 40, 50, 60 hours a week doing just that. Yeah, and if it's something that you really, really love, awesome. Awesome. Because that's what it actually comes down to. It doesn't come down to the money. The money doesn't mean dilly squat. It does not mean dilly squat. All money really is, is a feeling. So are you doing something that you love? I mean, and that's, I said, don't buy the illusion is what I titled this, this conscious coffee is don't buy the illusion because the illusion is, is that you have to go to school and you have to go into debt a hundred grand in student loans and you've got to work this 40 to 60 hour a week job that only gives you maybe a maximum of three weeks and, and limited benefits, and you got to buy into this, and you got to buy into that, and you got to, yes, ma'am, and, and yes, sir, the big boss, and you got to do all these different things, and you've got to live underneath the thumb of, of somebody else doing something that maybe you thought you thought you might enjoy. Chances are you're not even doing something that you really enjoy. Over 80% of the population is working very, very hard, very, very diligently, and, and basically just bringing themselves down in a job, a job, J-O-B, where they are treating their life, their time, their energy, their well-being for a dollar bill, a certain dollar bill, whatever that hourly dollar bill is. And it's basically all break everything down to what is your hourly wage, right? And that's how we, we process that. It doesn't much matter. You can make two, three, four, five hundred. I know, I know an attorney. I know an attorney who makes like five hundred dollars an hour, five, six hundred dollars an hour. And I was talking to him a couple of weeks actually before Christmas, and we were talking about different things. And I was like, Oh, do you have anything planned? But we're, we're going through stuff. And he's like, You know, I've known him for years, I've known him for years. And he was telling me, you know, I'm like, There's a man of money. He has. He, they've built a new house. They just got back from a fantastic trip in Europe. You know, his kids are grown. He, I know that he makes really good money. He's good at his job. He actually, and he, you know, he has his own, his own office with other attorneys and all this stuff. So he makes some really good money. But he's telling me, he's like, you know, I was looking at my finances going into 2018. He's like, I just don't want 2018 to be like the last five years. I was like, what do you mean? And he was like, well, because it just seems like no matter how much I had the best year of my life this year, the best financial, I made the most money this last year, this last 12 month cycle, than what I've ever made. Hi, Kevin. Um, than what I've ever made in, in the course of my um, career. I was like, well, that's fantastic. He's like, yes, it's amazing. It's, a, it's absolutely fantastic. Except I still don't have any money. I still don't have anything saved. I still don't have all this, you know, what I want. That lesson right there is that it's not about how much money you have. It's about what you do with it. And it's about the energy and the feeling that the money gives you. Because if you're always feeling that you're overwhelmed, if you're always feeling like you don't have enough, if you're always feeling like you're never going to get out of debt, if you're always feeling like, like you just, you know, that it's just paycheck to paycheck which is a very common illusion, is what I'm telling you, right? It's a very common illusion in that you have to live paycheck to paycheck, that you have to be in a massive amount of debt that you never have. That is the common hood belief across the board for the majority of people.
people out there. No matter how much they make an hour, it doesn't matter. If you are in that mindset, then guess what? The universe, what God is going to give you, God is going to give you more of that feeling. So money in that case is only going to bring to you more of that feeling because you're never going to have enough. You're going to get that, that incredible you know, bonus at the end of the year, which I know a lot of people have these bonuses coming up at the end of the year. And they're going to be, you know, three, four, five, ten, twenty thousand. I have I have an old lover of mine that is expecting a thirty thousand dollar bonus. I'm like, damn man, I'm happy for you. Now he on the other hand, he's getting his thirty thousand dollar bonus and he's absolutely ecstatic about it. But guess what? He owns a house in Ireland that's completely paid for that pays him Every single month, he he has it rented out. So every single month, the house in Ireland is paying for his mortgage here in Dallas. Okay? So the only debt he has is his mortgage here in Dallas. His cars are paid off, and he drives really nice cars. He um, he, he leases a place up in Portland, you know, and he doesn't have to worry about that. He travels all over the world. He, he has this immense wine collection. He lives very, very well. He enjoys life and he doesn't have any stress. As a matter of fact, the job that he's doing because he sold his company to a large, a large company and he's been working with them to move that company over over the last couple of years. And he told me, he was like, I'm done. I'm done living on the system. I'm done um, being, you know, not living in my joy, not having the life that I want. So he is actually planning on, he's like, I have this game plan that by March, April, I'm done with, with this job because I'm done being pushed around. I'm done being told what my schedule looks like. I'm not enjoying it anymore. And he, he was so adamant about sharing that once you, once he doesn't enjoy something, he moves on. It's, and it's not just like, oh, I don't enjoy it. Now, granted, we all have days where I mean, I love my work. I love the fact that I can get up and that I can come and do a conscious copy with you guys and that I see followers growing. I'm going to, you know, take, I'm going to spend most of the day with a sweet friend of mine doing some adventure that I don't know what the heck I'm going to be doing today. I'm just kind of putting myself in care of this, of my friend and letting him just kind of take me out. And then go, I know that I'm going to have a great lunch and that I'm going to laugh and that I'm going to be in high energy. And I'm going to probably, in that high energy, pull in so much abundance by the end of the day. I'm like, I am so excited because being around this other person is a high vibrational, very spirit-focused soul. I know that being in his vibration is going to keep me in the vibration that I want to be in. And that I'm going to really, truly enjoy every part of my day. And I'm going to be basking in a love connection there. So my heart is going to be like boom, 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 which is going to throw out this magnitude of high energy. And guess what? Right now, right now I have, without even, without even trying, I have about fourteen, fifteen thousand dollars $15,000 that's sitting out there to manifest in the next week. Now I have that potential that can come in. And I'm not trying to give, you know, I, I, I got hit yesterday with like, bragging and yes you should brag about things like this because it's it's exciting you have to this is how we if you see somebody else doing it then you know that it is possible to do it and that's why it's like my friend who's got the thirty thousand dollar bonus well shit he's got a thirty thousand dollar bonus who doesn't want that and and my friend today that i'm going out and enjoying the day with is a small business owner and he he has created a freedom-based life both of these people have created a freedom-based life. It's possible. It's possible and you can enjoy it and you don't have to kill yourself with the illusion of, you know, you've got to live a life where you are just killing yourself on time, on energy, where you're not spending time with your family, where you're not doing the things that you love. It's the direct opposite. The direct opposite is true. And of course in miracles, love of course in miracles of course in miracles teaches just that i mean it really comes back to the feeling to the love to to give to doing the things that are joy-based follow the fun follow the joy follow your bliss you know 
Joseph Campbell, he, he was very, very big on follow your bliss, follow your bliss, follow your bliss. And I've been told plenty of times following your bliss is bullshit. It's bullshit. It's an illusion. It's not true. It's false. It's that. And you know what? A little girl from a northern California town with, with only a high school education and growing up in, in basically poverty and living a life of the first 20 years of her life where she was struggling, making about $17,000 a year, raising five kids, struggling in, in, a, in a marriage. Good morning, Christian. Struggling in a marriage, you know, not having bliss, but little moments of it. And that's all she had. That little girl was me. The whole girl was me. I only had those little moments of bliss. And I, I had, I literally had the first 28, 29, 30 years of my life was more poverty focused and very, very negative thought and negative feeling supported. And I believed that I had to sacrifice. My, my ex-husband always said, you know, it's going to be amazing because he's such a dreamer. And he Nothing wrong with the opportunities. I agree to hate opportunities. I agree to hate opportunities because he always told me that we had to sacrifice and it's going to be such a great story at the end of it. It's going to be so great. We're going to have this, we're going to have that. And just think of the story that we get to tell of how we had we sacrificed all of this and now we get to live like, you know, castle in the sky. And that got really wearing after about 10 years of it. And then I went another 10 years. And I think we do that in our work. I think we do that in our daily life. I think we, I know from the people that I work with on a day-to-day -day basis and the, the struggles and the stories, and it's not just about relationship. It's not just about our sex life. It truly is about living in abundance in all areas and, and really just allowing yourself to not fall into the illusion of what society is teaching. Society is making us believe through the consistent programs out there that make us think and feel a certain way that money is really hard to come by, that that people who have a lot of money are not doing good, that they you know they they hurt somebody else for it in some way. But if you if you make a I say that there's just a ton of people on. Good morning, everybody. Um, it is. It is so. I, I my what I want you to gather from what I want you to gather from this is really truly follow your follow your bliss, follow your joy, find the joy, find the fun, find the, the things that make you smile easily. Accept nothing less than a smile on your face. And laughter in your heart, except nothing less than than love and high frequency people in your life and events in your life, and really take notice to those those times when when you're feeling well. You just remember, don't set up camp there, right? Do not set up camp there, because if you set up camp in the land, in, if you're one of those doubt doors, then you're going to consistent. Then you're going to bring yourself back down into the crap pot with everybody else that you don't really want, that you're living the life that you don't really deserve or want. And it really is my belief that we are not here on this planet living this existence to pay bills, to be in debt, to struggle, to live according to somebody else's structures, to be told what to do by somebody, somebody else in that aspect. To not be able to love and enjoy and experience. I believe that we are here to live in passion, in, in fierce love, in joy, in, on purpose, whatever that purpose of the moment is. And to share, to share our gifts, to share our smiles, to share our joy, to 
pull people up and to push people up and to really just, really, really just enjoy. Yes, fuck yes. Yes, I was explaining this. Fuck yes. I mean, it's true. To live that fuck yes life. That fuck yes life means not that you're living all by yourself, not that you're just having the abundance for yourself, but that you are helping everybody have abundance for your joy and that you are the light. You are the example. That's what it comes down to. Imagine if you walked out onto the street today. Imagine you go to the mall where everybody's trying to do these back to, you know, New Year's sales and after Christmas sales. And there's a whole bunch of grumpy people in the mall, you know, during the day. So there's all these grumpy people because they're, they're already spent, literally, energetically, time-wise, financially. But imagine if you walked into that mall and instead of 80% of the people walking, you know, just where their feet are going, ch -ch 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 -ch, and their head is down and they have a scowl on their face, they're, they're hunched over, and they're going in and out of the stores and they got their bags and their kids are on their phones, which like that, but they're happy because, you know, mom and dad just spent whatever. Imagine if that same 80% of people who walked into the mall and they're all carrying themselves like this. And hey, thank you, Addison. Carrying themselves like this, and they were upbeat, and they were making eye contact with other people, and there was legitimate joy coming from them, and they were just radiating happiness, and they were instead of you know looking at their phones like this, they were actually communicating with people who were out there, and they were enjoying each other. You saw people hugging and kissing and laughing. You see this. But it's only a few people. It's the 20%. 20% of the people are doing it. 80% of the people are struggling and are hating life and and letting freedom. <laughs> no such thing. You know. I'm one for the fuck yes lifestyle. I happen to absolutely adore my fuck yes lifestyle. I love the fact that I live according to my own rules. I love the fact that I get to help other people live according to their to their rules, to their desires, to their passion. I love that I get to just be me, just be me, that I don't have to put on a whole bunch of masks and bleh, and try to be something that I'm not to make some impression. I love the fact that I get to go and have these joyous events with people and that I can come back and have more joyous events with other people. And that I go from people that I'm in love with in one way to other people that I'm in love with in one way. And that I'm bouncing from love situation to love situation to love situation. And that means that I'm around my friends that I love. I'm around my clients that I love. I'm around my kids that I love. I'm around the men in my life that I love. I'm around, I'm around fellow coaches and mentors that I love. I'm around, you know, I'm around my, my I'm around my, what are we calling? <laughs> conscious creators. My goal on oh, here, he said since conscious creators. There you go. I'm, I love that I'm around my conscious creators and that those conscious creators are growing and that I, I, I'm in love with the fact that I feel the presence of God consistently in my life. Those are the things that you have to look for. None of that has anything to do with a dollar bill. That feeling bill will materialize into lots of dollar bills. It will. It'll provide financial abundance in so many different ways. It'll provide opportunity. It'll provide more people of like mind to come into the sphere and to connect. Thank you, Ryan. He says, manifest an amazing day, everyone. Love abounds. And as So really be able to, you know, the more you get into those feelings and notice, you know, I, over the course of the month, I have been talking about body language, about your thoughts, about your feelings, 
uh, I have not said you need to go and work harder, you need to do this, you need to do that. Notice that I have been really focused on the internal world, not the external world, because in the end, as long as you have your internal world in alignment and there is a joy base to it, the actions that will come and the oper now granted when opportunity comes, you got to make a decision to take it or not. And that's where getting more alignment in with your feelings really comes in. But you're going to open the doorway to so many great opportunities. Then you have to take action and choose an opportunity and go do that because there is action involved. But the action is about 2% of the pie and your internal world meaning your thoughts and your feelings are 98% of the pie. That's why I focus in on the 98% because as is, when the action comes up, really truly the only thing that you need to ask yourself about the action is does this turn me on? Does this turn me on? Is there enthusiasm there? Can I become obsessed about it? Can I get excited about it? Does it make my heart go, you know? What does it do? Or is it just chasing butterflies? And for the moment, it's going to be a fleeting good good second. But after that, I'm going to go, mm, now it's work. It's hard. It's difficult. I'm not really passionate about it. I don't really have certainty around it. Be careful of the butterflies. They're beautiful, but be careful of the butterflies. Find the thing that totally captivates your heart and follow it. Follow it in your love relationship, in your financial um, relationship, in your health relationship, in, in your work, in your friendship, in your spiritual life. Find the thing that captivates your heart, that really captivates your heart, and follow it. Okay? Figure out what your turn on is. It doesn't fucking matter what your turn on is, okay? It doesn't matter. Nobody else matters out there. As long as you are doing you and you are turned on to it and excited about it and God will come in and support you. The universe will come in and hold space for you and deliver more of that to you and provide more opportunity, more opportunity, more opportunity. But be careful that you don't buy into the, all this crappy illusion out there that you've got to work really hard for something that you've got to really struggle, that you've got to hate life, that it's got to wear you out, that you can't have joy, that you can't have this, you can't have that, and that you've got to be in debt and always living paycheck to paycheck to paycheck and, and struggling. Don't allow yourself to be like looking at that. Like looking at financial statistics before the holidays. And one of the statistics out there was saying, the average household in America, and I don't, I didn't talk about Europe, so if you're from, I'm, I'm here from Europe or something, sorry, but I don't know what those, it's, I, I know that Europe's better off, but in America, the average household cannot handle a $500 emergency, cannot handle a $500 emergency. There is not enough buffer in, in the majority of American homes to handle a $500 emergency. That's really sad. That's really, really sad. But the reason for it is because the majority of America is buying into the illusion that they have to struggle, that they have to work really hard, and that they can't have. They can't have joy. They can't have abundance. They can't have connection, not through empowered living, not through freedom-based living, because they don't believe that freedom-based living is true. And guess what? Like Churchill said, if you believe, whether you believe you can or you believe you can't, either way, you're correct. Yeah. Think of that right there. Go have, as as Mr. Ryan said, go have a man, you know, a day of absolutely amazing manifesting. Go live in blessing. Command your blessing to come down on you through your thoughts and your feelings. Open up to it. It's all there for you. Just ask for it ask ask and it truly is given okay i love you guys i will catch you guys tomorrow at six o'clock in the morning um if so if i hear hold on maybe i won't hold on all right so if i hear you correctly begin with conscious creating absorbing every aspect of it 
so that we may replace our unconscious creating to that of higher energetic vibration manifesting the joy, happiness, and abundance. Um, yes, yes, because as, as Michael's sharing here, so we are unconsciously, it's a law of attraction when we, you know, we think of like miracles being positive, okay? And we only consider miracles to be positive, which means that we are only acknowledging the positive manifestation of our thoughts. And then we go, oh, it's a miracle. Okay, number one, if, if you're actually consciously creating on the front side and then on and then that moves to unconscious creation because you have formed the habit of positive thinking and feeling then all of a sudden the miracles are still miracles but they're happening at such high frequency and consistently that it's kind of like well yeah i expected that to happen and i expected that to happen so it's more on the lines of, of you just are now unconsciously creating it and but prior to that, you have to first of all become consciously creating the negative situations that you are in. There's no such thing as a victim because we're all creators of our life and and we created all the shit that we're in too. Okay, so yes, if you're in a shitty spot, sorry, there's no place, nobody else to blame but yourself because it was happening up here and coming from here. So you have to really, first of all, become the witness to your shitty thinking, and then consciously make the choice to change those thoughts over to positive, those feelings over to positive. And that is really the work. The work is in that right there, moving from the negative, um, unconscious mindset of our negativity to the conscious mindset, to the conscious practice, like a yoga practice, the conscious practice of creating positive thoughts and feelings which is can be very very difficult at times but the more we practice the more we practice the more we practice the more we breathe into it the more we lean into it the more we really focus in on that and we learn different things then we can we we can consciously are have this practice of of positive thinking and feeling and that positive thinking and habit and feeling starts to change the pathways in our mind and it then becomes a habit and an unconscious creation so then we move from where we were unconscious we were creating unconsciously negative to creating unconsciously unconsciously positive and that's where miracles start to go pop 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 so instead of a bunch of of what you could say bad luck which is actually still miracles it's they're just miracles forming in the morning, Jason, miracles forming in um, in the negative aspect. We're creating the miracles forming in the positive aspect. And, and it just is that, that transition right there. But first of all, you have to become aware that you are the creator of your shit and you're the creator of your blessings. So either way, you are doing it. It is just where are you applying your consciousness? Where are you applying your emotion? Those are the things. And, you know, and I'm going to end on, on this note here. Um, I think I've said it before. I know I use it in my practice all the time because I love this statement. And it is that what we really have to do is we have to make what is familiar unfamiliar and what is unfamiliar familiar. So once we, be, once we really truly take what is unfamiliar to us, which is living a life of abundance in miracles, where miracles are constantly popping in, constantly happening, where life is magical, where life truly is magical, because that, for the majority of people, is unfamiliar territory. But when that territory becomes familiar and becomes your daily practice, then what you are currently living in, the stress and the frustration, the overwhelm, the lack, becomes unfamiliar. But it does, it is a process. It takes time. It, it, it really does. A miracle, you can, you can, you can get off of this conscious coffee and you can have a miracle happen like that. Okay, you can have a miracle happen like that. And you can go, wow. And in those moments, you have to have tons of gratitude and really be excited because that is helping you 
see the miracle, embrace the miracle, and get into a higher vibration. But for the most part, it's going to take a lot of time, and you're going to go, where's my miracle? Where's my miracle? Where's my miracle? Where's my miracle? Well, number one, you got a freaking timeline on your miracle. So you have to take the timeline off your miracle. Just find, telling you, find the find, find the joy, find the bliss, find the, find the enthusiasm, find something to get obsessed about, to love on, to really step into that turns you on. Find that, and it's going to help push that shift so much quicker than if you just are constantly going, where's my miracle, where's my miracle? Because where's my miracle is saying that you doubt the, that miracle is coming. It's saying that you are doubting that God is going to provide. So if you really truly believe that God is going to provide miracles, that God wants the best for you, and that, that God can move mountains, then stop looking for God not to do it and put your attention on God doing it. Okay. Focus on having that life, that magical life. Focus on receiving the thing that you want to have according to how you want to have it, not to anybody else out there. So, okay, I love you guys. I'm going to catch you at 6 o'clock tomorrow morning. Thank you so much for all of your comments. Thank you so much for everybody who popped in on here. Um, if, if this message touched you in any fashion or form, please, please, please share it. You know, I, it's, that's how we're growing the conscious coffees in the mornings. More people are sharing, more people are making comments. Um, so it's really, really important. I, I want 2018 to be a year about freedom, um, about really true empowerment and an abundance living. And that means abundant in love, abundant in spirit, abundant in, in uh, finance and money. So help me take this whole thing to the next level, share this message, uh, continue making comments, pop on here in the morning. If you can't make it every single morning, that's okay. Pop on the ones that you can, they are recorded. Um, and if anybody else wants more information, Ms. Addison was kind enough to, to post um, my, my services page up there for my coaching and stuff. Just know that it is changing come in January, all of that is pretty much obsolete. So if you like anything that's on there, it's gone in about two weeks. Um, I'm, I'm in major transformation mode. So I love you guys, and I will catch you tomorrow at around 6 a.m. You'll have a fantastic day of manifesting and blessings. Love you guys.